Good morning or afternoon for some of you. <laughs> Whew, it's been a good morning. Um, when I woke up this morning, I was a little confused again, um, just like yesterday with the time change. Um, you know, my kids are waking up at like 6.30 and my, hi, welcome. And, you know, I set my alarm for six and I keep pressing snooze and it makes no sense to me whatsoever because it's actually an hour later than when I'm normally getting up, right? So I'm just like, what is going on? Like, why are the kids up before me? Why am I finding it so hard to get up when I've actually had more, um, I've actually had more sleep, <laughs> more rest. So that, you know, that always gets my head in a spin. And, oh goodness, my dog is barking again. She always barks when I do this. This is so weird. Um, excuse me while I go let her out so that she can not interrupt us. Hi, Kristen. Hi, Lana. I'm so happy you're here. Um, so we're going to get started right away. I'm so glad you guys are on. I want to make sure I maximize your time, you know, um, and get started right away. Jump in. And, um, you know, keep the comments coming if you, you know, have comments or questions. Um, that's totally fine. You know, you don't, you don't have to be like, oh, I got to be quiet. No, it's totally fine. Um, okay, so I'm really excited. Sorry about all this awkwardness. I'm really excited to be here today with you to talk about this. Um, because, oh goodness, and now we have another interruption coming. Um... This is what happens when you work at home. <sighs> there we go. Uh, I have had, hi Dana, I have had um, many, many um, struggles with anxiety and exhaustion. Um, different levels and different um, times of anxiety that feels different, right? So we're going to talk about some of those. Um, and also the exhaustion that, oh, I hated it so much, um, functioning from a place of like, you know, I, I really have to will myself to move my feet across the floor, exhausted, right? Um, and so, you know, recently I was just reflecting and I thought, wow, like I, I have improved that so much. Um, I have reduced the uh, anxiety and the exhaustion, um, and they do kind of play into each other, okay? So that's one of the things I'm going to talk about too, but um, I've reduced them so much, like I should share, <laughs> um, you know, what I did um, because I want others to be able to experience that as well. I don't want to just be greedy and, and uh, you know keep all the secrets to myself. So um, give me some likes or hearts if you are excited to be here and to get started. Just let me know where you're at because um, I want I want uh, you guys to be here with me. I don't wanna just talk to myself, right? I do that all the time anyway. Yay, there we go, all right, fantastic. Okay, let me click over here. I just wanna make sure I see um, all the things, so far I'm seeing your comments and everything, it's like fantastic, that never happens. Well, no, not never, just recently it's been a little booger. Okay, looks like everybody's good. <sighs> okay, so the three things that I realized that really, um, you know, there's probably more than three, but I wanted to kind of condense everything and make it more simplified. Um, and let you know that if this is something that you still, um, still, still battle with, um, and that it really affects your life or slows your life down, hey Melissa, um, then you know, take notes and and I want I want you to be able to apply these strategies to your life. Um, that's the whole reason I'm doing this. So. Um, Let's see, just simply, the three things I'm going to tell you 
our um, exercise helped me. Daily exercise, not just like once a month exercise. Um, meditation helped me. And anxiety. I mean anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what we're trying to do. Lower. Sorry, I saw my husband and got distracted. Um, now, what did I just say? I said um, exercise helped me, meditation helped me, and positive affirmations helped me. They have been super uh, powerful. Hi, I'm doing a video. <laughs> um, so, let's see. Um, let me look to where I want to start. Oh, okay, so I will actually start with the affirmations just because that was probably the thing I was most resistant to. Um, I thought it was weird. Uh, you know, my friend that was introducing them to me, I was like, okay, that just sounds like I'm lying to myself. You know, like, she, she wouldn't let me speak the way I was speaking. Okay, so imagine, that was kind of annoying. Um, you know, I would say something and she'd be like, no, 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 no. And, and she would give me an affirmation. Like, oh, here, here's one. Um, everybody loves me. And I'm like, um, no, I can't say that. That's totally not true. <laughs> like, I was like, I cannot say that. Um, she's like, yes, it's true. Everybody loves you. Why would you think elsewise? And I'm like, um, no, I, I can't say that. That's not true. That just feels weird, right? So, um... That that was my my first kind of like um, introduction to affirmations and why I was resistant because I felt like I was just telling myself lies and I didn't like that. Um, but you know she she kept doing that and 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 speaking that type of way to me and she kind of taught me like well this is how um, you create an affirmation and like the type of speech. So I don't know how she convinced me to um, start practicing them. I honestly don't remember that part. But I do remember working through some type of a workbook where you had to create affirmations. And um, so I would send them to her and she's like, no, you, you didn't use the words right. And I'm like, what? Um, what are you talking about? And, and it was because I was using like um, speech that insinuated maybe or like, I hope, you know, and she's like, no, that's not an affirmation. And so I learned that quickly and now I know how to write them very well. Um, if you've noticed, I share many of my own affirmations that I create. My mind knows how to do that now. Um, and it is like positive speech as if it's already there. So some things are there. Okay, and some things you are cultivating. So let's see, um, I'm gonna use another example today. I actually have 10 minutes of myself recorded doing my affirmations. I, I typed them all out, I had this big collection of them, and then I thought, oh my gosh, this is like a really, like a lot of things to read through. I thought it would be nice to hear it because I'm an audio learner and I love you know, that's how I memorize things is I, I listen to them. And so I listened to it over and over and over and it did stick in my brain. Um, and today, I haven't listened to them in a long time because now I just kind of like go through my day and say them. It's, it's part of my life so it's not something I have to like um, practice necessarily anymore. Not because I don't do it all the time but just because it's part of me now. So... That's one thing I want to say to you guys is that whatever you do consistently, um, that's practice. And whatever you practice over and over, that becomes your new normal. And I, and I say that because I want you to know that with everything I'm talking, um, talking about today with you, is that is a very important thing for you to remember. What you do, like what you practice on a daily basis is your normal. So you can take a look at your life right now, make a list, what do I do on a daily basis? I actually just did this with my um, coaching group that I have um, going on this month. I'll start a new one next month. 
Um, and I had them do this exercise where they write down just as me- like set a timer for 10 minutes, write down as many things you can think of that you do on a daily basis. I mean, from getting up, going to the bathroom, brushing your teeth, making coffee, you know, do you exercise? What, how do you get, do you take a shower at night? Do you take it in the morning? You know, um, and just kind of brain dump all the things you do. Sorry, I'm sitting kind of crooked here. Um, all the things you do on a daily basis. And those are your practices, okay? Um, they are normal to you, and whether you like them or not, they you do them every day, okay? So those are your practice. Um, so a lot of the things that I teach are um, creating new healthy habits, new healthy practices. Um, and so if you were like me and you're thinking, oh, I don't know, I, I've seen some affirmations here and there, or I've heard of what it is, or maybe you have no idea what a positive affirmation is, um, I will talk about it a little bit more because I know I didn't give you a good example yet. Um, But they, I was resistant to them two, three years ago. Nah, probably three years ago. Three years ago, I was resistant and kind of like doing it just because she was telling me to do it and thought, oh, whatever, you know, I'll show her, you know. (laughs) Um, But then the more I was doing them, the better I got at them and the more I could see the effect the positive effect they were having in my life. Are you guys with me? Is this, are, are you like, okay, I want, I want this information. Or are you like, okay, I'm about to get off here. Um, I just want to know. I just want to know if you're tracking with me, if you find this valuable. Um, but what you practice becomes your new normal. And the reason why I keep emphasizing that is because so many times the reason why we don't do the next thing, we don't move on to, oh good, Um, we don't move on to the next step, the reason why we don't take the risk, um, the reason why we stay in our bubble or we stay in our box or the guidelines that have been drawn around us by society, by our family, by our um, church members, by our, um, our, our kids, whoever, okay? You don't have to be in those boxes. You don't have to be in those guidelines. And I am proof. I am proof. I was totally, oh, well, I don't do that. Oh, I can't do that. Oh, that's not my personality. I always said those type of things. So um, if you find yourself being challenged to do things and your response is, oh, well, I don't, I don't, I don't think I could pull that off. Um, they're, they're better at that than me or, um, Things like that. One thing, and I use this today, and I even used it last week when I um, kicked off my my new writing adventure, right? And many of you know about that and that I'm already like go, go, going on it. One of my affirmations was, I am a writer. And I look at it every day and I say it every day. And I say, I am a writer. Mm -hmm." Okay? And, um... That was actually given to me. Uh, Some affirmations are given to me and some I create. But that one was given to me and I was like, oh yes, I need to adopt that one for sure. I am a writer because every time I want to tell myself, well, you don't really, I mean, you didn't go to school to write. You, You don't have an education to write. Those are called fears, okay? And fear is a liar. And I really want you to know that. Okay, fear is a liar. Um, and it keeps us, it hinders us from everything good for us, honestly. Like, I've given the example of, you know, fear as trying to keep you from falling off the edge of a cliff. But honestly, today, that is not how fear functions in our lives. Fear has taken over so much that we're blind and we don't even know that it's fear running the show so anytime you're saying limiting things about yourself okay um i know that this is doesn't seem like it has to do with reducing anxiety and exhaustion but it does it does because exhaustion is fueled by fear um anxiety is fueled by fear 
And you might be thinking, well, how are you going to connect those dots? Well, I promise you I can. Um, so the first thing that I wanted to hit on with you guys is how powerful positive affirmations are in your life. And the reason why I went into, de um, into fear and the reason why I went into practicing these new things that seem weird or that are just not you, okay, um, is because thou those are the things that need to get out of your head for you to be able to reduce anxiety and reduce exhaustion in your life, okay? So let me give you, let me, before I forget, let me give you examples on how fear and limiting beliefs play a part in your anxiety, okay? So anxiety, usually at the core. So, um, you know, let's say you are going into a social situation and you say, oh, I have social anxiety. I get really nervous and, and I don't like it. It makes me uncomfortable and, okay. Um, now, yes, there are things, such things as introverts and extroverts um, and all of that and that's great. That's fine, it doesn't really matter. Um, if you are meant to do something, if you are meant to be somewhere, go somewhere, if you're called to it, then you need to go and trust that you'll be okay. Um, I have to do this. There are times I don't want to go places. Um, last Christmas I had, um, like, I don't wanna go there. I don't, I don't wanna go to that Christmas party. I don't, you know, um, and it was okay. Sometimes that's the right decision. Um, and it was because I was like, no, it's it's not going to serve me and I'm not going to serve anybody else because I'm not in the place to be there. So the healthy thing for me was to not go, okay? And it wasn't because I was afraid of what people were gonna think. I just didn't wanna be around those people. <laughs> um, and so sometimes saying no, you absolutely have to, okay? And, and here, was, here was the thing where fear didn't run me. If I would have went to that, this is just an example, if I would have went to that, it would have been because of fear. I would have gone because of fear of what they were going to say about me um, for not showing up uh, or, you know, yeah. Like I didn't want them to talk about me so I would have gone and been like, here I am, I'm here, I did my thing, I did my part, I showed up. Um, and so the, the brave thing for me to do, the thing that was outside of fear was to not go and to say, you know what? They can think whatever they want about me. I'm not in the place to go there. And you guys, that was a huge, gigantic win for me because up in, you know, if you read anything I wrote before, um, the past couple days, I had huge issues with um, going to be with my church people. Uh, I did not feel good around them. I didn't like the way they talked to me, I, you know, and, and their looks and whatever and their opinions. I didn't like that. And I was always trying to please them and um, like make myself perfect enough so that maybe they wouldn't do their thing that they do, right? Um. And so for me not to go was me being brave because I was like, oh gosh, like I had that pit in my stomach, like, oh my gosh, I should just go. I should just go because if not, they're going to say this. And I was like, who cares? Who cares? Do you care what they think anymore? No. The one opinion I care about is God's and I'm already approved by him. And so anybody else's approval is just, hey, thanks, you know, extra, hey, thanks God, thanks for the encouragement. But it is not what I require anymore. Um, and anxiety is usually the fear of somebody else's opinion. And if you, if you really think about it and you think about all your times when you feel anxiety, it has to do with worry, which is also fear, okay? Worry about whatever, you know, oh, I'm not going to have enough money, um, you know, I'm not going to have enough to, like, time, I'm not going to have enough um, approval, I'm not going to, so it's all about not enough, you know, lack, 
um, and, and worry about that, that it's not going to be okay. So do you guys agree with that so far that um, anxiety is usually fueled from worry of some sort, um, doubt of some sort, and worry and doubt are just byproducts of fear, okay? Fear is like the big, you know, hole, and then worry, anxiety, or worry and doubt are in there, okay? And then they manifest as anxiety, okay? Now, I will say this just because um, I still have moments, or not moments, but like days, um, like a day where I can feel that my insides are anxious, like I'm wound up, and um, I, I, I'm very like mindful, and I'm like, okay, what's going on? Am I, am I thinking about something? Am I worrying about something? And usually now, when I feel that way, it has, I'm, I'm, it's not anything about what I'm thinking. It's like insides. It's like hormones, chemical imbalance, whatever you want to talk about, because I have crazy hormones. Crazy hormones. Uh, and so the, the cool thing is, it's like, okay, I'm not worrying about anything. So I can't, it's not like I can just surrender that because I don't know what it is. But I can speak my affirmations, right? And so I'll say, you know what? Um, everything I need is provided for in this day. And every time I say that, your affirmations should make you feel good. I feel peace. Um, God is guiding my steps and I trust him completely. God never fails. So I can walk in confidence. Those things give me peace. When I say them, I feel a difference in my whole body, okay? Now, other things I do when I'm having anxiety um, that is not caused by a worry thought, a doubt thought, and when they are, you know, I, I, um, I use my mind exercises to get through them, okay? Um, but sometimes when it's like beyond that and it's like just in my body, and I'm, I'm even like, I feel happy. What's going on? Like, I'm almost like kind of hyper, but I, I still don't like the feeling. So that's when I will kick up my workout, right? Like, that's when I'll crank it out and do something that's like super cardio because it helps my breathing, okay? Um, so exercise, we haven't gotten to that yet, but the exercise in that situation, in those anxiety situations, really helps to get my breathing level again and kind of shift my brain like okay you're, you're fine you you can breathe because if you have those super anxious times you know sometimes it's like <sighs> like you just can't get that sensation of that deep breath um okay so um that's one thing another thing I use for my anxiety is oils essential oils um pretty much I would say I have like a gigantic box, a wooden box with three or two shelves and one drawer that is filled to the max, overflowing. They're all over my little um, thing over there where my diffuser is. I don't even know what it's called. Um, they're in my kitchen on the counter. I mean, I seriously use oils all day, every day, and they, I would say 95% of them I use for my emotions, for my well being. In my emotions um, they do help they do um, like they're my natural medicine I don't I don't have to take any type of medicine anymore that's always fun when I go to the doctor are you on any medication nope <laughs> um, so I use those to help me also in like really high tense moments I'll put a little bit on my wrist <sighs> take a deep breath I rub it on my neck and I hold it and they take a deep breath and the oils actually um, go into the bloodstream within 30 seconds and they do help you on a cellular level and they do you know they are natural medicine whether it's for your mind or your body okay and um, so I use those all the live long day um, and those really help me 
and sometimes I, I need a lot of them. <laughs> like sometimes I'm like, wow, this day, oh my gosh, I really need help, like extra help managing um, my anxiety or my stress or my exhaustion or whatever. Um, so that, that's a little side note on those. Um, meditation. Meditation has, yes, I was like waiting for Melissa to say something. Um, meditation is also something new for me um, that has really helped. And um, the reason why I never did it before was because I don't like sitting still. Um, even as I've been with you, you can see I move a lot. I shift a lot. Like, I don't like sitting still. So, um, I was always like, yeah, right, I'm not doing that. But, oh my goodness. Huge difference in my life. Everything I'm telling you, positive affirmations, okay, exercise, daily exercise, meditation. These three strategies have changed my life like drastically, not just like, oh yeah, they're cool. No, <laughs> they have completely changed my life. They've changed the way I live. They changed the way I view life, the way I look at things. That's pretty amazing. Like that's a pretty powerful thing to say, okay? And um, I will put in here too, let's see, I love oils and meditation. I meditate before, but yes, that is fantastic. Yeah, I have some meditation apps too. Hey Blair. Um, so, you know, again, I'm going to come back to the, um, practice thing. You might be thinking of everything I'm saying now, well, that sounds fantastic, but I don't have time for that. I would like you to strongly reconsider that. Uh, because if you truly want to reduce anxiety in your life, if you truly want to reduce the exhausted feeling you have of dragging your body around, your mind not being able to have a second to breathe, okay? You'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. If, if you, you know, you, people that have it know what I'm talking about. That mental fatigue, the physical fatigue, I know them very well. I know both of them very well. And I am so, so, so grateful that that is not my life right now. That is not my life right now. Those things do not control my life. I am not pushing through the exhaustion anymore. I hated it. I hated it. And I would push, 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 push. Thank you for the, for the link. That's awesome. I'm going to check that out. Um, you know, uh, I, I pushed so hard and I was in this cycle and, you know, thankfully like God's always made me a person that likes to think a lot. And so I can observe these patterns, but the pattern would suck. And I started noticing, okay, so this is what happens. I get tired. I don't listen to my body. I don't slow down. I keep going because I think think I have to. That is a huge part of what I want to talk about with the fear and how exhaustion, um, fear plays a part in exhaustion is because we wear ourselves out because we think we have to. We think we are worth nothing unless we push ourselves. Do you agree? Have you had those thoughts? Have you felt like you're not enough unless you keep pressing on and um, draining yourself dry? Have you felt like that before? Let me know. Oh, Cause maybe I'm barking up the wrong tree, but um, I, that was how I lived my entire life. And I didn't realize it until later. I started noticing this pattern of like, okay, I go for this many weeks and then I get to this like breaking point where it's like, this is your last chance, Vanessa. This is your last chance to slow down, take a breather, or you're going, you're not gonna like what's coming next. And most of the time I would push through because I didn't believe the warnings. Um, I would push through and I would regret it because then I was good for nothing. Um, I would get physically sick, um, nauseous, uh, headache, fever, fever, 
fever from exhaustion. My body just could not handle it. It was the only way to slow me down because fevers and vomiting um, are the two things that I feel it goes hand in hand with it. That, that's totally me, Kristen. That's totally me. Um, those things, the, that, those are the only two things that slow me down. Like, I cannot function with a fever. Like, I, I just, I can't. It, it's, it, I just can't. Um, it's the only thing that really stops me. And vomiting. Yes, vomiting stops me. I hate it. Um, that's a whole other story. So, yes, Kristen, I feel the exact same way that it does go in hand with my cycles, but the good news is I have been um, not having that happen where I'm completely taken out of the game um, and my like bad episodes are like a day and... I'm aware of them. So I'm like on full force, like, okay, you gotta use a lot of affirmation, like more than usual, you gotta use a lot of affirmations today. You gotta release a lot of fears. Every time you have a fear come up, what do you do? You hold a captive. You say, well, that's not true. I don't listen to that anymore, okay? You speak the truth over it and you move on, right? Now, on those days, okay, the days that we're talking about, on the weak days, I like to call them weak, like my body is weak, my mind is weak, and it's not my fault, right? Instead of letting it completely just, okay, well, do your thing, right? And going down this spiral where it takes me like a week and a half at minimum, minimum to recover, I, I force myself to put my practices in place. And my practices are not pushing in exhaustion. My practices are slowing down. Does that make sense? So my practices are, okay, I know you want to keep going right now, but if you don't stop, you know what's coming. And so I will purposefully close everything up, sit in my spot. Yes. Yeah. Sit in my spot, put my hands open up, Indian style on my lap, right? And oh, even taking that posture, even taking that posture, my mind is so happy. It's like, thank you. I feel it. I feel the thanks in my body just in that posture before I even start. And then I start my breathing, right? And then I start, um, like, I'll breathe in a positive affirmation and I'll exhale a false fear, right? Um, so on sometimes if I'm, if I can't, if I cannot wrap my head around what I'm feeling, because sometimes that happens. Sometimes it's just like the feeling, right? I'll just continue to breathe and I'll just say, like, I'll think when I inhale, good, bad, good. So e even just something that simple where I'm not even putting a name on it. I'm just like, okay, I'm inhaling what's good for me. I'm exhaling what's bad for me. I'm inhaling what's good for me. I'm exhaling what's bad for me. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Slowing down, practicing slowing down has been one of the best things I've ever done in my whole life. Um, I still struggle um, because I've practiced going fast my whole life, right? And so that's something to be very mindful of as well. If you're like, okay, well, I practiced this for a week and I'm not better at it. Okay. Think about how many years you were practicing not doing this. How many years you were practicing the negative habits. How many years you were practicing the destructive habits that led to your anxiety, that increased your anxiety, that led to your exhaustion and, and made it be your status in life that you are exhausted that is your status right um so for me these strategies they take time um not too much time it's amazing how much 10 minute increments of positive habits can do for you and so if you commit yourself to doing them 
they will eventually be your normal. So for me, I would like to say my positive affirmations, they are pretty darn normal to me. Um, they flood into my brain throughout the whole day. Um, anytime an old fear thought pops up, it, 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 like, it like pops, literally, boop. Like my positive affirmation pops it while it's growing and doesn't even have a chance to become full grown. Okay, whereas before it would definitely come full grown. It was running my my whole body, my whole mind. Um, it was running it, and now it's like pop. You know, because my new normal is I have so many positive truths in my life stored up that come to me as quick as the fear does, right? And the fears pop up less and less. But again, in those weak times, they might pop up more, and that's okay. And that's okay. That's one thing I like to say to myself. Anytime I'm experiencing something that I'm like, hey, why is this here? I'll, I'll um, address it and say, hmm, you know what? Right now I'm feeling really frustrated, and that's okay. Um, it's okay because I'm human. And I have emotions, okay? But my emotions do not control me. And... That, that is an exact example of um, the process that I go through throughout the day. Um, and you see, that was simple. What did that take? Like 10 seconds? And um, I'm able to just whoo, let that, that go. Um, there are, you know, I, I have had, I think last November. No, 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 no. Not November. Uh, it was for Good Friday. So it was like Easter time. I was having like a major anxiety attack. And I was very upset about it. Like confused. Because I was like, why am I having an anxiety attack? Like this is dumb. Um, like I just, I, oh, it was horrible. And I brought on this horrible headache. I, I couldn't find my happy. Like I couldn't find it. It was like completely gone. And I was like, what the heck is wrong with you? You know? Um, and, uh, I just kept, I guess I, I just kept being mad about it. And I kept trying to like force myself to not be in an anxiety attack and it didn't work. It didn't work until I accepted like, okay, you know, I, I'm human. I, I don't know why this happened. I mean, I, I think I do kind of know why there was just too many people around. I didn't have one solid second alone. Um, in the entire day and that's not normal for me and so it just built up and uh, it got uh, worse and worse um, and I, I still couldn't break away there was like no away it was like a big a big uh, function I had family and my kids were you know I was with them the entire day um, and so that's what brought it on and for, but I couldn't get rid of it and I didn't start feeling better until I just sunk in and said you know what it's okay. It's okay. I'm a human being. I, I don't want to feel this way. God knows I don't want to feel this way. And I'll be okay. And the end of the night, I ended fine. I was peaceful. I was happy. You know, I had a lot of gratitude in my heart. And I got there. Um, so it's not to say you're never going to experience anxiety ever again. But I'm telling you, these things I've talked to you about today will drastically reduce anxiety and exhaustion in your life and that was the whole point of this is these are life-changing strategies um and it's up to you like you have to commit to practicing them um otherwise they don't you know they don't do anything um and it can't just be like sporadic um so you know you just carve out time and you that, that has to do with prioritizing, you know, and like I, I mentioned that list at the beginning, you have to say, what do I want in my life? Do I want all this anxiety in my life? Do I want to function in exhaustion mode? Probably not. So if you don't, there's things you can do. And guess what? These things are natural, right? Every single thing I share with you today, exercise, natural, and can be free. Meditation, natural free. Um, affirmations, natural, free, right? Like there's no, <laughs> there's nothing, um, 
like cost wise to invest. The only thing I mentioned today that costs money is um, the oils. And uh, those are a godsend. Um, I thank God for my oils pretty much every single day. Um, so, you know, if you ever want more info on that, you can message me. But um, the other thing I want to be able to offer you today is because I know that, you know, maybe you you liked what you heard and you thought, okay, I really want to do that. But you don't really know where to start. You know, you know, like, how do I implement this? How do I get started? Then I would like to offer you, you know, a coaching call with me. Um, I will set up a link within this. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to do that. I am going to send it to you in email. Um, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send you an email. I'm also going to create um, a YouTube replay link for this so that, um, you know, I will send it to you in your email and you can keep it. You can review it. Um, that's what I'm going to do. And then I will also send you a link if you would like a coaching call um, where I can help you like well just that's what we spend our time on is going over how do I like fit these steps into my busy 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 non-stop life right um, it's something that I've gotten good at and um, something that I provide for my clients and so I want to be able to offer that to you as well but um, I hope that um, you know you found at least something to take with you today that was really encouraging, really helpful. Um, and, you know, I was glad to be able to share it with you. And um, let's see. There was, I mean, you guys, I could seriously talk forever about time. And, but we'll save that for, we'll save that for something else. Um, I'm writing about time right now. That's my, my thing. Um, and time thinking about time creates a lot of anxiety and um, leads to exhaustion too. Um, so I'm definitely going to be sharing on that soon. But I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. I hope that you will choose to go slow um, at some point today. And, uh, you know, give yourself 10 minutes. Just give yourself 10 minutes. It makes so much difference. And in the whole scheme of the day, it's not that much time. And it'll really benefit your life. So thank you again for watching. And please take care. Bye-bye.